Bite has always been here for you, and our promise to bring you no prices on what you need most will never change. Get a 700 ml bottle of all gold tomato sauce, only 26 99 and 750 grams of cross and blackwell tangy mayonnaise, just 24 99 only at ShopRite. My name is Oswald Indoda. With me here is Pomono. Uh, let us greet him. Right, before we go into today's lesson, let's begin by sanitizing our hands like that, inside and outside, and then in between our fingers, we stretch out our hands to maintain the social distance and always we should have our masks on. Right, today's lesson is going to be on diminutive nouns. Right, boys and girls, remember we looked at Common nouns, we also looked at abstract nouns, proper nouns. Now we want to move on with these nouns. Like I said, today's lesson will be on diminutive nouns. Diminutive, let's pronounce that word properly. Right, what are diminutive nouns? Diminutives are words that refer to something smaller or younger. This is on page, uh, sorry, this is on page three. It's on page three of your booklet. Right, diminutive nouns are words that refer to something smaller or something which is younger. Remember about young ones of, of different animals and then we have also small things. For instance, a river, Okavango River, a small Okavango is called a rivulet. And then a young one of a dog is a cub, sorry, a puppy. And then we also have a young one of a, a cat is a kitten, right, diminutives are made by adding a suffix et l e t l i n g o c k e double t e and k i n to the root word now we are saying these are uh, these suffix are added to root words e g a root word like eagle if you add L-E-T, it becomes eaglet. So eaglet is the young one of an eagle. You have owl, a young one of an owl becomes an owlet. Duck, duckling, bull, bullock. Kitchen, kitchenette, hill, hillock. Diminutives, can also be a special word for something younger or smaller. E.g., tree, we call it a sapling. A, a, a small tree is called a sapling. Right, let's proceed. Below there on the same page, we have a list of diminutives to refer to. We want to use this as our dictionary as we do our activities. Each time we will be turning to page three and look for the answers. There are quite a number of nouns and their diminutives. For instance, there's beer, cup, goose, gooseling, and then we also have um, the last ones, which is goat, kid, stallion, colt, crown, coronet etc. 
Let's turn to page four. Right, on page four, diminutive words with the suffix et and the suffix let, l-e-t. An example there for novel is novelette. Kitchen, kitchenette. Towel, towelette. Cigar, cigarette. And then on the other side, we have pig, piglet. Book, booklet. Leaf, leaflet. And lastly, droplet. Right, boys and girls, let us turn to page four of our booklet. We want to look at activities. Number one, select the correct word from the box to complete the sentences. Now the words in the box read as signet, eaglet, phone, sapling, streamlet, kid, lamp, Calf, Aslet, Duckling, Cub, Fall, Rivulet, and Gosling. Now, what you simply need to do is to choose a word that will complete the given uh, um, phrases there. For example, A, a young duck is a duckling. A young goat is a kid. So you proceed from C up to N, writing the correct uh, uh, diminutive for each. And then exercise, uh, I mean activity two, on the same page, it says, add the correct suffix to make the diminutive explain the meaning of each diminutive. For instance, we have hill. Do we say hillock or hillet? The answer should be hillock. That's a small hill. Then book. Do we say bookling or booklet? The answer should be booklet, meaning a small book. So you continue with the remaining um, activities. Now, activity three, that is on page five. Let's turn to page five. Activity three, it says, read this passage. And obviously, at the end of the passage, there are some questions to be answered. Now, let me read for you the passage first. While bending down to drink water from a rivulet one day, a fox and a cub fell in. Try as they would, they could not climb out because the walls of the rivulet were too high. All the tadpoles and fry along the bank were shocked at the arrival of the new inhabitants and swam away. Not long afterwards, a goat and her kid came along. Behind them were, lamp, were two lamps and a piglet, rushing to get the first sip of water. Seeing the fox and its cub in the water, the goat asked them why they were in the water. We are enjoying the cool, pure water, replied the fox. Would you like to jump in and taste it? Without stopping to think, the foolish goat jumped in, followed by the others. No sooner had he reached the bottom than the cunning old fox leaped onto his back 
and scrambled onto the bank with a cup in her, in her mouth. Looking down at the unhappy goat, the fox laughed and said, Next time, friend, be sure to look before you leap. Sadly, the goat, the kid, two lamps, and the piglet drowned. First to notice the free meal was an elver, followed by tadpoles, fry, and terrapin hatchlings. They all had a good meal. Right, boys and girls, that's how we should read. Then we turn to page, um, page six of the booklet where we have the questions. You answer those questions from A to D. For instance, the first one would tell you, underline the diminutive nouns in the text. So if you go back to the passage on page five, as you read through, you would see quite a number of diminutive days, diminutives in there. Then you underline. Yours is simply to underline the diminutives. And then B says, write these words in the diminutive noun column below. Use each diminutive only once. Right. So I would like you to do that exercise. And before that, ah, okay, that's fine. Right. Welcome back, boys and girls. Let's go to page six of our booklet. It says, uh, activity four says, complete the following using diminutives. A small hill is called a hillock. A condensed book is called a booklet. Now, C to G, you can complete that on your own. Let's quickly move on to activity five, which says use the diminutive suffixes to form diminutive nouns. The diminutive suffix E, T, T, E, and then gives us, I mean, from the noun statue, we have statuette. So we can do the rest on our own. Let's quickly turn to page, um, Seven, activity six. Draw a line from the diminutive to the correct definition of it. On your left hand, we have diminutives. And on your right hand, you have the definitions. So I begin with A. Definition A says a small river, a small, ri uh, sorry, a very small river. You go to uh, your left side. If you look at number 12, it says rivulet. A very small river is a rivulet. So you join a, a very small river and rivulet. That's A and 12. Also, a young, a young goose, that's on B. A young goose becomes a gooseling. So you join number 1 and B. Now, let us do the rest on our own, but before that, let's proceed to activity seven, which reads, change the underlined words to diminutives and rewrite the sentences. The lady found the dog in a river and took it home to dry off in her kitchen. The underlined diminutive nouns there are dog, river, and kitchen. So, if we are to rewrite that, the sentence would read as follows. The lady found the party in a rivulet and took it home 
to dry off in her kitchenette. So we can move on to B and do the rest. Now, on our page uh, eight of our booklet, there is a crossword puzzle there. There is a crossword puzzle where we have um, a word being on our right, right bottom or bottom right. There, there is a, a list of words there which are diminutives. And then on our right where it says across and down, those are the nouns where we should write the, the diminutives. For example, number one, going downwards, it says pig. So you go to number one, you find the diminutive of a pig, the young one of a pig. That should be a piglet. So if you write from number one going downwards, piglet should fit in those boxes. Across, that's number two, we have got. Now, the diminutive or the young one of a goat is a kid. Those are three letters, they should also fit across there. So you continue from number one, two, up to the last one, which is number 20, writing the, um, the diminutives. Right, boys and girls, thank you very much for listening. Uh, we have come a long way doing these nouns. Uh, like I said, we did proper nouns, we did abstract nouns. Today we're looking at diminutives. Please, let's not forget them. Right, but before I go, always remember to sanitize. You squeeze your hands inside like that, outside in between the fingers. Stretch out, at least to ensure a meter apart, and then you put on your mask. Thank you very much, boys and girls. We will meet in the next lesson. Bye -bye. What is social distancing? Hi, everyone. I am Zoshi, and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! Yes, you can. Oh, yeah. now I can see um, nothing. Yeah, you must put faces. This is a really black. The path. When you come up in the table mountain, you gotta make sure you have comfortable heels. <laughs> comfortable shoes, no heels. <laughs> So when we came here, but there was no clouds. Now it's coming. Okay, so when you come out, you get your photos there. So Annie got a? Dusty. Annie got a Dusty, and we're going to name her Mika.
Early this morning, woke up holding my head, hearing my heartbeat all night long. Shades of this motel keeping me in bed, reading the news, just trying to stay strong. I need to just get up and take a deep breath, I keep it together, cause it's a beautiful. Welcome to Sport Africa. The BBC's new weekly show will explore the big sporting issues and questions, like why Africans aren't winning medals in the pool. I just think it's their mindset. Meeting established and rising stars. I could be the Nigerian first Grand Slam winner. And at the heart of it will be you, the fans, with your passion, your opinions, your stories, and even tests of your sporting knowledge. <laughs> Go beyond the game with BBC Sport Africa. The mighty Zambezi River, the longest east-flowing river in Africa, a river that flows through six countries, home to a plethora of wild species of fauna and flora, a lifeline for many people whose livelihoods are dependent on the abundance the river brings. Globally, communities who live along rivers rely on these rivers to survive. Communities living along the Zambezi call it the river of life, bringing water for their crops and fish as their main protein source. In Namibia, a country situated in sub-Saharan Africa, the Zambezi River sits at the heart of Kaza, the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area, which is one of the greatest conservation areas on Earth, a stronghold for very many of our most iconic wildlife. I'm right now where the river forms the border between Namibia and Zambia. This enormous water body provides sustenance to a wide array of wildlife, bird and fish species. It's also a lifeline for human beings. The same communities are the, are the people also who are doing the illegal activities. The price of fishing has gone up because fish has become scarce. The more they finish this, the more our life gets harder and harder. These days it is very rare to get a big brim, unless in those protected areas. A small group of community members, together with non-governmental organizations like Namibia Nature Foundation, are fighting back. We have to start thinking out of the box, to be honest, because what's going to happen is going to be out of this box that we haven't seen before. By creating protected areas, monitoring and patrolling, fish stocks have a chance at recovery. These are the stories of the people fighting for the continued existence of their communities. These are the last defenders. Struggling with no food, no what. But we didn't stop. If you are going to do it, our young children, they will never know the fish. Kind was, kind sis, kind I, Namibia, eyes. Did I get sister Hulda Navaseda? Did I get a I hoa? Namibia Oncology Center, Naragara Sisin, I come from now. D. Quido, Pounds A Hari, Oms Nahari, Oma Bada Nahuri, Mugu said again, ha, Ugu, Habe, I get off Mugu said, I ha, Ugu Habe. Han are Uguha, who gave Pounds a hari. It had had in the E. Twenta Nindin, novel coronavirus, stinky goosa. Oh, Pounds a hari.
And water, you got rid of all the germs on Achilles' hands. In a time of uncertainty, false news, and fear, learn on. While the world scrambles to make new sense, while the experts turn around in circles, trying to find their way back to tomorrow, learn on. When classrooms become empty cathedrals and the trees start to bear answers, learn on. Learn on until every parent is a teacher and every teacher is a mentor. Learn on until you cross the boundaries of your mind, until you grow eyes and sprout wings. My friend, learn on. On sidewalks, on the floor, at the neighbors, in the market, in hallways, in churches, under trees, at kitchen tables, in riverbeds. Learning doesn't only happen between four walls. Learning happens in the small space of your enormous, beautiful mind. Start where you are. Use what you have. Learn on one. Invite learning in.